Hi everyone, my name is Anthony Cummins and I am the author of How to Be a Modern Samurai. It will be a link below. And recently I did a video on whether, when I got kicked out of the Bujinkan and I'd like to do a follow-up video for that because everybody was very interested in it and why I left the Genbukan. Now, if you don't know, I'm the guy who sort of came along and corrected Ninja Research. And um, But you should know that well, I was in these organisations before I went on a quest to correct it all. So let's talk about it. Right, I was in the Bujinkan for most of my time, but I got kicked out of the Bujinkan, as I say, the other video is there. Um, so I tried Genbukan, still wanting to be, you know, in the ninja training scenario situation. So I used to stay in Akashua and I used to go to um, the, to Noda to see Hatsumi and everything. But I'm gonna be honest with you, I cannot remember exactly where um, the dojo was for Genbukan, but I got somebody to phone, Shoto Tanamura, and I basically said, you know, can I train with that? I did train with Hatsumi, um, but I'd like to come for an interview. And I went there, I remember getting a bus there, it was in the countryside, classic sort of house dojo connection in a sort of flatland country, crossroad-esque stuff. Um, if you don't believe I've been there, you know, that's where it was, but I remember getting a bus there, uh, not a train, usually in Japan you just get a train and walk, but it was one of those times you have to get a bus, which is quite, not rare in Japan, but you definitely get the train 99.9% .9 more. So. I got there, we had a chat and everything. He said, even though you've trained with Hatsumi, you can come and train with me, no problem. And I used to go there. He, on a Sundays, I think he got used to get dressed up in his Tai Chi kit and do some Tai Chi. Um, and then most of the other days he would be doing Togakure and stuff like that. Now, I think Shoto Tanamura is actually an ex-police officer. Please correct me if I'm wrong. And he was a very disciplined, strict man, which was very good, no problem. I am used to, I was... Uh, secret instructor for years in the secret center. I'm very much part of discipline go to Navy bases do all that sort of stuff uh, I don't mind the discipline. We're okay there. In fact, if anything, I thought Hatsumi's was way under disciplined But as I'm gonna tell you now Shoto Tanamura's was too disciplined for the or it's disciplined for the wrong reasons Now we went there. He had a lovely my first impressions. I had a lovely clean dojo. It was excellent and um, but I thought now, while, as I said, discipline is okay, rigidity or um, staticness is not. And he was extremely rigid. You would you would do the moves, 100% left foot here, right, you know, 45 degrees, move here, do this. You stand one mat away um, and, you know, this has to happen. You get in this line and do this. And, and which is not a totally bad thing, but... Or for those guys like myself who've been around the martial arts community for a long time, there's a point where you know that's a beginner's way of doing it. We do, we all do that, so everybody's sort of doing the same thing. Then there's a bit of a moving on. But even his top grade students are doing it. He awarded me the use of a black belt because I told him I'd got my fourth dan in the club, my local you know guy who trained with me, and I'd come to Hatsumi to do my thing. So he said at least wear a black belt. If I remember rightly, I can't remember exactly what he said about it, but um, I remember some of the other students were not happy that I'd just come up to the dojo. I wasn't in his system, but I could wear either a green belt or but I couldn't remember, but I wasn't a beginner in his sense. But I told him I'd got my fourth down there and I was doing this, so and I was up here in the sort of line, and he didn't mind. And that happened after a while because obviously I'd done a lot of training I put a lot of effort into training in the Bujinkan and doing what they do and Togakure and all that so he was like okay I recognize even though you're here as a beginner you are not just turned up there you go um and I remember training with a guy we had a two thingy and you had to sort of one person grabbed and the other person had to push on the side of the arm and pull down sort of like you know manipulate the arm manipulate the arm. and this guy he was just trying to be he was annoyed with me he was just trying to push me around he was nice but you know you can tell you can always tell when your training partners a little bit annoying you put it in a bit too much just because they're annoyed um but anyway shoto tanamura was quite you know um not the nicest guy in the world and i don't mind there being distance between students and masters i don't mind all that but what he did which uh, he said, oh, I've got a present for you, Anthony, a gift. And I was like, okay, a gift, no problem. And he got me his book. He signed it to Anthony, he says, a gift for you, Anthony. And then he gave it to me, he went, 3,000 yen for $30. Trapped me into it, I was like, and then you can be a student. I was like, all right, really, mate. And when I went the same, no, a few years later, I went to see Otaki Sensei, and Otaki went, oh, I've got a gift for you, Anthony. And he pulled out, he started writing a book, and I was like, oh, here we go, you know, yeah, how much for this one? And um, he just gave it, I said, how much do you want? He went, no, 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 it's a gift. 
that was the difference. Or Taki Sensei was a gentleman, not a swindler. Shoto Tanamura, that was a swindle. That was a con man's trick, and I hated that when he did that. I was really despised when he did that. I forgave it, I let it go, but I was like, okay, that's not the best. So training was okay, but it was far too static, and it was clearly, clearly just Takamatsu's Togakure curriculum, which I say just, but that's a problem for me saying just because actually that's what some people would really want. But I believe that that Togakure curriculum was terrible and it was literally that you have a shuriken here, you go into Ichimonji, you, you do a, a handspring out of the way, you get a star and you throw it and kill somebody. It was like, what the bloody hell? So I was like, okay, this is starting to get a bit... No, you know, not really, not really, no thank you. So it was starting to get a bit... This is not real fighting ass this is i always remember i did i also did a video who's the best booty counter instruction in the world dennis bartram he would he would be go through this manipulation gate that everything pulling it down it'd be really deep deeper than i could grasp sometimes conversations and i can grasp quite a lot maybe because i didn't have the knowledge of the anatomy probably i got lost in the latin terms if i'm honest because you can probably keep up with it it's just the latin terms are too much and all of that and his was just Here's a shuriken, do a backflip, throw it. But one of the, so I thought, a bit of a con man, bit of a trickster. You know, a hard man though. Clearly he's got something to do with ex-police or something like that. He's not soft. But the main problems were the feel of the dojo. It became, it felt like a pretend samurai dojo. And what I mean by that is, the way when we read old documents, um, there's clearly discipline in old samurai ways but there's camaraderie and there's there's uh, i can't quite tell you where you can get this but in the feel of all of it there is the idea that you're a band of people you're learning you've got different specializations there's multiple layers to it and there's a bit of an essence of reality you know what i mean like you go into the temple and you 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 know you study um um the the ways of the gods and you're studying hachiman and it was just all a bit more realistic he had this very much like it was a dojo from a 1980s um, kung fu movie. And it was like, Master says, Yo! you know, and it was like, you bow, boom. And it was like, discipline there. It was just a bit like, nobody really would have, you know, like been like this, you know. Yes, an old master may have killed you or done that, but you would have been like, I've been to other dojos where, to, I, I'll give you an idea. One of my friends who's very much into Japanese martial arts, he learned very many years ago, especially in the old days, maybe not so much now, but probably still now. If he wanted to get on in a martial arts dojo, he would bring the instructor whiskey, cigarettes, pornography. They're the three things he would always buy. He would give them on the sly, say, Sensei, I've got a gift for you. Thank you for your lessons. And he'd give them in the sly. And the Sensei would be like, cheers, my old dog, because they're dirty old men. They're like old men who are a bit old. You know what I mean? It's like they want their whiskies, a good whiskey. They want some cigarettes because they all smoked in the 80s and 90s. Maybe not so much now, but in Japan, still high smoking percentage. And they're all a bit dirty. So, but whereas other people are going, I brought you this Hachiman Daibotsu statue. And they're like, mm, another one for the shelf. I brought you this sword. It's very good. Here's some Scottish whiskey, packet of fags from England and some pornography from England. Mm, come to the extra class on Saturday morning, which is exactly what happened. But, so that's a very old school Japanese dojo, but Shoto Tanamura had a very much a, very clean dojo, but very much too, almost like a Kung Fu Bruce Lee film. He sort of organised it around his knowledge of the movies. And um, so, and there was one episode where he'd asked me to do a kata and he stood in my way, right? I've been told to do this kata and everything, and it was the hand flip one, and come up, and you go back into Ichimonji and all that the other way. And um, and I stood within, like, there's a tatami mat, and I stood maybe two feet inside of the tatami mat, and he was on it, and the entire door just stopped and went, <clears throat> and he went, never do that again. I will, he said, if it was the old days, I'd cut your head off. And because, oh, I'd turn around and go, sorry, like that. I half turned, bowed, sorry, dead polite, you know, no problem. You have to, and he wanted me to stand to attention. Bow, he's like, get out my fucking way, mate. I'm doing the technique. Get out my way. If you don't want to, if you don't want to run a dojo like that, what are you doing, stud? When somebody's doing a technique in a place where you know, and I thought, oh, is it some deeper, cool message? You know, like he's teaching me about awareness. No, it's just, no, it was just. There was no dimensional levels there. It was just 
from straight out of a kung fu film, basically. You know, I will decapitate you with my students if you do that again. You know, now you must go. You know, it was just too, it was too cheesy. So the simple fact is, is the martial arts was so not just out there. At the time, I didn't disagree with the martial arts. At the time, I wasn't against the Togo Kure stuff. And I thought, okay, but it was starting to get to the point where I was like, this is just something's not right here. And the martial arts didn't seem right. I'm going to do a backflip and throw some shuriken and, uh, you know, this sort of stuff and roll to the side. And it was just like, I'd just get kicked in the nuts. Been in plenty of fights. You guys have been in plenty of fights, probably. You do that in a fight, you're going to get kicked in the nuts. Don't do it. And I'm not going to be able to do a flip. Come up, find a secret pocket. You know, everybody does this. You've got the shuriken, you pull it out. Have you ever tried to go into a secret pocket in your coat and get a sharp shuriken out of it? It ain't true. You know what I mean? And we know they did. They had it in their kimono. So if someone never points out about Togokure, is they always say, oh, you get inside and you get your shuriken. But actually, you would go inside your kimono here. It's just one of those, they clearly were, this skill was invented with a karate gi and a, and a machine stitched pocket. You know what I mean? I'm not saying they didn't have stitched pockets into things. We know they do. But it was just a bit, it just doesn't all fit. So that didn't fit. The dojo was well out of the way, but that doesn't matter. I've traveled hours and hours for training, but it wasn't worth it. I thought the teacher was um, only after his own power and his own ego. He had no room for adaption or deeper reading into things. He pretty much had a, he was like the god of the sword or something. It was just like, okay, you know, he named himself. And I just got an email off a guy called Robert who talked about that. And it was just too much. So when there was no one specific thing, it was when you add it all up, I was like, no. So I just, that was it. The last straw was when he did that. Get out of me. I did, didn't go for a few weeks because I had stuff to do and I was um, on work shifts, I think. So um, I couldn't go because I could only go every second week because of this bloody bus and my work. And I had to work on a Saturday morning sometimes at the language school called Shane or whichever days it was. It was like my system only went like that. So I missed one. I could have gotten one and I thought, mm, no. And I went to the next one again and I thought I'd give it another try because I'd been multiple times. But after he'd had that sort of little shout and a little bit like, what are you doing? So... Uh, just to clear up, it was not the fact that I love discipline, I'm with it, but I, there's a difference between discipline and maltreatment and mis misunderstanding of how discipline works. And, and I know discipline very well, and he had no idea. He just was a bully boss, a bossy bully type guy who would like shout and pretend he'd like watch samurai films. Of That's how samurai act. Oh, hi, us, oh, hoo, ha. You know, no, mate, no. Um, there was one time though, I'll tell, I'll, tell I'll tell it in the next one. I've got I've, so I've got another video coming up, which is Hatsumi versus Tanamura, because these are the questions I get asked all the time. So at least they're on the video they said, and I'm not doing anyone any harm because genuinely he had a good dojo. He had a nice dojo. It was very clean. He had some positive things. And if you like that type of stuff and you want to go for the original Togakure, he's the man to do it for you definitely but i didn't join the jinen camp but there you go guys let me know what you think get a copy of how to be a modern samurai help me out keep things going let me know what you think in the comments below and i'll read all the comments